Krista Martin, welcome. Hi, Craig. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. I've been, you and Bo were my literal, my first two calls for the podcast. <laughs> one, one, because I, I love you guys, but also because you're uh, like, I, I feel like the value you could bring is just through the roof. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm kind of surprised you had me because, you know, I can talk and rattle on about real estate for days. So no, that's exactly why I wanted to have you on. It makes my job easy. I just sit here and listen. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so what's new with you? Well, same old, same old, just working away and, you yeah. know. I You're love a busy it. Bee. Daily grind. I love it. Yeah. So, and you've you've been selling real estate for how long now? Oh my gosh. Well, we opened our first office in the recession, 08, 09, and I got my license shortly after that, probably like 2010, something okay. like that. So Bo Bo went first. Bo went first, and then yeah, I came later. Yeah. What made you want to make the leap? Well, you know, it was really a God thing, actually, because Bo tried to get me to get my license sooner, but um, I was actually in ophthalmology, which I loved. I still really? love. Yeah. I love elderly people, and that was my job. I was a certified ophthalmic technician okay. and a scrub tech, and so I really, truly loved it, and so I didn't want to quit my job. Um, and Bo goes, I need help. I'm so busy. I really need you to get your license. And I said, no, I'm not ready. I don't want to give up my career. Yeah. And um I just prayed about it, prayed about it. And then I think it was a timing thing. My kids were little then. Uh, and then finally I was like, you know what? I think I would be good at this. I think I would like it. And God gave me this piece. And there was a reason for it because I am a, literally a workaholic. I love it. And when I do something, I just do it. And so it was a timing thing, I think, because when I got into real estate, I literally just took off. Like I was working, you know. I don't even know, 60, 70 hours a week. I don't know. Just Did you start off part-time or did you dive in oh, full-time? Oh, no, I, I dived yeah. in full-time. But, you know, when I first started in real estate, it was a little bit different. It wasn't like, you know, now with COVID and there's just, you know, everybody's trying to buy. Like, And I had to kind of reinvent the wheel. I had to, I mean, I focused primarily in Oklahoma City and Edmond um, because I we owned an office here in Guthrie. So I didn't want to take anything away from our Guthrie agents. So it was just a little bit different for me, but... Um, anyway, so yeah, that's kind of how I got started. Did you, did you feel like pretty confident going in that you were going to be able to generate, you know, drum up some business, meet the people necessary to like really kind of sustain you guys? Or did, were, were you ever like fearful or doubtful that you'd be able to make it work? Just jumping in full time like that? Uh, my biggest fear was getting lost. Oh, really? <laughs> I have a terrible <laughs> sense of direction. That was my biggest fear. No, I kind of like, I, have always been in sales. Like when I was 14, like literally I've been selling horses since I was little. I had like a turtle farm when I was like 12. Like I had really? sold turtles to pet shops. Like I have always been in sales naturally. Uh, that's my natural talent. So, and I love people. So, um, I don't know. I never really worried about so much being successful. It was never really about the money. Um, it was about helping people and like contributing to the world. Like putting people in their homes or their forever home or helping them build or investing in something that's going to be their retirement. Like you can't, it, it's not about the money. It's really just about the satisfaction of being involved in the most important decision someone's going to make. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know. It's kind of a trick question. Was I worried I would make it, I guess is kind of what you're saying. Not really. It was just kind of a one step at a time thing. Yeah. So no, that makes sense. I think it's, uh, it's one of those things where as a new agent, you know, you're, you're always kind of wondering, and there's a lot of agents that work part-time because they want to get a feel for it and kind of, you know, dip their toe in the water, so to speak. Um, but I think something that holds them back from making the leap into sales or into real estate full-time is that lingering doubt that they'll be able to, you know, pay their rent oh. or keep the internet on or, you know, whatever it is. And, um, so I think that that's something that just scares away a lot of newer or, or part-time agents from really committing and going full time. But I think you and I are very aligned in our ideologies because I, I did the same thing. I just, I kind of knew roughly what I wanted to do and just had a ridiculous amount of faith and just jumped into it. And, and kind of like you're saying, you just follow the steps and, and kind of feel the natural progression of everything. Yeah. I would tell new agents that, if this is your passion, then you have to be diligent in your time. And in this business, it is about being diligent time and working hard. If you don't 
like structure your schedule and things like that and work without expecting a paycheck because real estate's kind of like that, right? I don't want to pressure anyone into any kind of decision so that we get paid. It should be because that's what they want to do. And so sometimes it's three to six months out or 12 to 24 months out. Like I have clients that come to me year after year. I mean, you've shown them houses like two or three houses for a year and three years later they find one like that's okay. So it's about like putting in the time and thinking long term. And so with new agents, I think that's hard because you don't know when your first paycheck's going to, you know, be there. So, I mean, it is, it is a risk and it's, it's something, you know, to consider getting into real estate, but like anything, if you love it, you'll figure it out. You'll make it work. And if it's your passion, then you'll do whatever it takes to be successful. And that includes maybe failing once or twice, you or know, three or 10 times. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's failed at something. I've screwed up. I promise. Yeah. I, I tend to look at failures though, as, um, not really failures. I, I, I always try and reframe them into like learning opportunities. So if I failed at something or I messed up, I kind of like just look or wonder like, what's the lesson in it? How do I, you know, how do I change this going forward so that I don't make the same mistake again? And I think if you can do that and just learn from your own mistakes, that, that almost separates you from the pack because not everyone can do that. I think some people get wrapped up in their own head and mm-hmm. then they start wondering what other people think or, you know, all that stuff. And, and there's just this like mountain of doubt that, you know, they, they sort of get trapped in. But, um, So what was it like for you when, when you were first getting started, what were some of the things that you did to, you know, meet new people and and get into these conversations? Cause as, as agents, that's one of the things you just have to talk to people, right? Well, I have no problem doing that, but, um, (laughs) so I took a lot of time learning. Um, so I would like go to neighborhoods and I would literally study that area, like what's been going on in the last two years, three years, you know, what's the trends I knocked on doors. Um, I have no problem knocking on people's doors and talking to them. Um, and also too, like if I did an open house, I would go knock on every door of the weekend before and say, Hey, next weekend I'm having an open house. And you know, just talk to people about real estate. I wasn't like, you know, Hey, I need your business. I just want to say, Hey, do you know what's going on? Um, I hung out a lot at new construction neighborhoods. Um, I met a lot of great builders. Builders are great to work with because, you know, they love to talk about their product and we're talking to people about, you know, homes. And so just kind of getting out there and literally meeting people. Um, Bob McKinnon, which is one of my favorite speakers with Exit, and uh, he actually started Century 21. But he always said, really? yeah, he's I awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, he did. Okay. He's one of the founders of Century 21. But he said, you could go to the mall and put a sign up that says, I help people invest in real estate. And he goes, people will line up and talk to you. And he's he's true. I mean, it's he's spot on. It's right on the money. It's true. Uh, people love to talk about real estate. So, you know, just learning and being educated and really like, you know, knowing your craft. I think that uh, you could talk to anyone about real estate and get business, but you got to know what you're doing, you know, but um, finding the business is not hard as long as you're willing to get out there and just talk to people about what you know, you know? Yeah. And you, I, I think <clears throat> that might be one of the things that actually scares off newer agents from mm-hmm. getting out and like pounding the pavement, so to speak, is that they don't feel maybe like they have the, the knowledge base to have these conversations. And so like, how did you, how did you learn the market? Did you, did you just, you know, just from looking at trends in home sales in specific areas or like, what did you do? Well, I, I'm a big time blocker as you probably know, I'm minute by minute. Yeah. So when I first started, I would literally say, okay, the first two hours of my day I'm researching. So I would literally get on MLS, which is our real estate software for those who don't know. And, um, I would see what has sold, what's available, what are the, what's going on in this neighbor? Is it new construction? Is it, you know, existing? Is it 10 years old? And so I would just sit there and study the market. And I would also do tons of YouTube videos. I also studied what the East and West Coast were doing. What marketing trends am I missing? I want to be better than the best. Yeah. And I'm still to this day, I mean, I have people that I look up to and go, okay, I'm going to be better than them. My, you know, so I would look at what other people are doing on other parts of the country and try to do something even better than that and make it my own. Um, so 
you know, that's kind of how I would do. I would just time block and really study the market, study what other people are doing. I mean, there is a huge, you know, avenue of information out there that oh we God. all you, have You've got it all at the tip to. of your fingers. Yes. Yeah. I mean, talk about how lucky we have it. I feel sorry for the real estate agents who were in the 80s that, you know, Bo had like real estate books like this when he got his, <laughs> you know, and he had to fax everything. Like we got, you know, AuthentiSign and all these things. So um, people can learn. They just got to make themselves spend the time to do it. It's like going to college or something. Like you have to learn the market. And, but, and you've got to treat it like that. Yeah. You, you've got to, you've got to invest the time in, in like learning these things. And one of, one of the things that I really believe in is the 10,000 hour rule. You know, that, that, um, um, number of hours to mastery. It's sort of the, it's what OSHA uses to define, um, uh, I guess level of expertise within a career field. And, uh, so I know 10,000 hours is a lot of time, but I think if you just have that mentality, like, Hey, I'm not going to be a real expert in this until I've put in 10,000 hours. And if, if you just kind of know like that, that's what I have to do. And, and you do it a little bit every single day. And, uh, I, I think the compound effect is, uh, something that a lot of people overlook. Like if I just do a little bit every single day, then that adds up to be something huge. And I, uh, a lot of new agents, they want to come in and, have the business right away and have the knowledge right away. And then when they fumble or, you know, make a mistake, they kind of get turned off or, mm. or kind of retreat instead of saying like, okay, well, I, I learned a lesson. Let's pivot and let's do this instead. And so it sounds like that's, that was literally all you did. It was just trial and error and yeah. learning. And, and and I would do, I, when you were saying this, it brought back a memory. Like, so I was an ophthalmologist for, and, and the doctors that I worked for still clients and friends of mine. And one of the doctors that I worked for said, I want land with big bodies of water. So I remember I would get on the tax records and I would look at like the satellite image of properties with big bodies of water from here to Grand Lake because that's where he's looking. And I would just sit and write letters to all these property owners and say, hey, I have someone looking for land with you know, big bodies of water. And uh, so I- Did would, it work? Yes, it did oh work. Oh my and God. I, and I would get people go, well, yeah, I mean, I've actually thought about selling. And he didn't buy a few of them. You know, he we went and looked, but I ended up listing them and selling them to someone else. So kind of like this isn't rocket science. I mean, some of this stuff is pretty simple. It's just kind of time consuming. Yeah. Um, but I remember him saying to me, he's like, Krista, you are going to be so good at this. He's like, no one does this, do they? I go, I don't know if anyone does this or not, but <laughs> you just told me what you wanted. So I'm going to find it for you. And it's not on the market. So that, that's one of the things that I admire about you is, is just based on what I know, it really seems like you got in, got into real estate, you know, pulled yourself up by the bootstraps and just made it happen. And you've made yourself incredibly successful. And I think it's just doing those little things that not everyone is, is willing to do. Yeah, but can do, you know, you just yeah. gotta make it your own. Well, my thing is too, you know, so I'm married to Bo and he's like, so extremely smart and polished and I am not polished at all. <laughs> and so I would come home and try to talk to him about real estate. He goes, Oh my gosh, I cannot talk about real estate with you all night long. So <laughs> I got to where I couldn't ask him anything. Cause it was like, he was like, Oh my gosh, please stop talking like, about that real separation. Estate. Yes. Yeah. So people are like, well, you are successful because of Bo helping you. I'm like, well, really? He didn't want to talk to me about real estate. <laughs> he, <laughs> he talks you to you. He helps you guys more than he helps me. I promise. If you ask him that, he'll tell you that. He's like, because he'll answer the agent's phone call in two seconds. I call him and ask him something. He's like, oh my gosh, figure it out, Krista. Yeah. So anyway, it's kind of funny. I think that's just a testament to his faith in you. Uh -huh, you know, yeah. We'll just roll with Thanks that. Thanks for taking it for him. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, what, what are your, kind of your thoughts on, on the real estate market today? Because, you know, things have changed a lot since 2007 and I think, you know, the world or the media or whoever would, you know, say, I oh, was, you know, we're in a pandemic and, um, and I don't doubt that, you know, that's happening, but it's really sort of changed the real estate market and how we operate. And what have you seen in that? Well, I mean, owning real estate is still the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it seems like that dream has changed a little bit. People want a little bit of land. People want a little bit of space. They're unsure what's happening in the world. Um, so it's definitely changed real estate. It's harder for me because I like to know everything that's going to happen. And, you know, like I can say, this is what your house is worth. This is what's going to happen in the next six months. And so it's kind of been a little bit of an unknown, uh, uncharted waters, or yeah. I guess you'd say. So it's hard telling people like, yes, I mean, right now your house is worth so much. Um, and they're like, well, will it be next year? You know, but so it's kind of hard, the unknown, which I'm not used to, 
But I will say we've been going to like some of the National Association of Realtor events, like hearing like what is the data across the country. And so they're staying in 2022. We're going to keep growing and then it'll kind of level off and stabilize. But in Oklahoma, we don't see the highs and lows like the East and West Coast, which is nice, I think. Great. Yeah. Um, so you know, what do I see happening in real estate? I think it'll level off. I don't think we're going to have that bubble that people are scared of anytime soon. Um, but I do think it's a great time to buy with interest rates low. They're going to go up. They are going up. Um, the problem is, is it's just hard to find something because the inventory is so low, but it's out there. You know, there's still people, you know, buying and selling. Are you doing anything different for your buyers because the amount of inventory out there is so low and it's, it's really like it continues to shrink. I I know over the summer, you know, it kind of bumped up a little bit and and we were able to bring a lot more buyers in and find homes for them, but especially through December and into January, you see it continues to remain like way down. The number of new listings is just crazy low right now. So what are some things that you're doing to help, you know, find places for your buyers that maybe, you know, some other agents aren't? Well, it helps. I do have a pretty good database of, you know, buyers and sellers. So it is about putting people together and people in homes. So it is kind of funny. We do, I do have a pretty good like data of people that are going to move if they can find something. So I'll be like, okay, you want to find this and this person wants to find this. So a lot of times I connect the dots without it even like going on the market sometimes. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I think like right now I have a house swap where one person is buying this house and this person's buying that house. Like, so it happens a lot. Um, so that kind of helps, but also too, I advise my buyers, like you need to have a good lender you need to have your own closing costs paid for. We can't ask for closing costs like we used to, um, to make your offer more. Buyers used to rely on that, right? Oh, all the time. We would ask the sellers to pay their, you know, closing costs and just increase our purchase price or whatever. But in today's market, you really can't, you know, sellers want to make sure they've got, you know, 10 or 20 offers in front of them. And if a buyer's asking for closing costs, they're going to go, "Mm, I don't know if they are, you know, don't have enough cash to pay their own closing costs. Will this deal, you know, fall through. It's not worth the risk. So it's about educating your clients. Like, listen, maybe we start saving some money, you know, we'll keep looking for a house, but in the meantime, let's say for these closing costs, it'll make your offer stronger. Um, contingencies are hard, you know, when they have a house they have to sell in order to buy. So again, I'll say, okay, let's go ahead and get your, you know, house, like, I don't want to say like pre-sold, but let me show it. Like the Craig, you and I are showing a house yep. that's not on the market on Monday to some clients of mine that are moving to Enid. Um, so I was like, Hey Craig, this is coming onto the market. So let's go ahead and kind of get a little waiting list. See if we can get someone it works for. Yeah. And it was perfect because the, mm-hmm. the type of house is what a lot of people are looking for right mm-hmm. now. And I happen to have out of state buyers that are in a position where they could move any day or they could buy any day, but they don't need to. Um, but the, the, uh, goal ultimately is to, to buy and, and move down here. And so it's one of those situations where it just, it was like, you know, you hear, you know, bells and you're like, this is perfect, you know? Yeah. But you and, called me and said, Hey, do you have anything? So you true. were, you know, taking that, you know, extra step instead of just looking on MLS and go, Nope, there's nothing. You started calling around going, Hey, do you have something coming up? And so you were doing a service to your clients, taking that step above to go, I'm going to try to find you something not on the market, which I'm sure they appreciate, you know? Do you think that's something that newer agents are missing out on is like actually making phone calls and trying to drum something up instead of just relying on what's openly available to every other agent in the MLS? Sure, sure. And also like some of these realtor events are, you know, great to go to. So the Edmund Board of Realtors does a great job putting events together for realtors to meet each other. It's hard because we're all so busy, right? And you're like, well, I'm working all the time and I've got kids. It's just hard to find time. But it is good if you can go to those every once in a while because you get to mingle and go, do you happen? Because there's a lot of people that have the same situation. Like I have a couple people that will move if they can find something. And it's just about connecting the dots, really. So, Yeah. yeah, I think it would help new agents a lot. It's so interesting that when you reduce it down to that, that's really all it is. It's just you're connecting the dots. You know, you have a person who has a need and you're just filling that need is yeah, all. That's it. So really, real estate's not a tough gig. It's not. It, well, <laughs> what, it's got, there's a yeah. lot of stuff probably that, you know, we're making this sound pretty easy. It's a little bit harder yeah. than that. But once you get that initial, you know, 
you know, hurdle cross, then it, a new job begins. But one of the things I found when I first got licensed was, you know, you have that period of like this, the uh, schooling, pre-licensure, uh, education, everything, and you go through and read all the books and you learn all the laws and the rules and everything. And, uh, you feel massively confident. Like I know everything now. <laughs> and you know nothing. And well, and <laughs> you don't even know that you know nothing. You just like, you feel like you're on top of the world. And then, um, you know, you get out there and you start trying to talk to people and you're like, Oh, um, I don't days on market. What is that? You know, you've got <laughs> no idea. Mean on this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, MOL. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually, that got me. MOL. I kept seeing, you know, 4.78 acres MOL. And I was like, oh, what could that mean? It is true. Like you get out of real estate school and you do, you learn all these things that you don't really use that much of, uh, which is why it's important to have, you know, your license at a brokerage that helps you. Um, everyone at our office has the same tools that I have. I, I'm an open book. Anybody can ask me anything and you can do everything that I do if you want to. Um, so it is good. Veda and Bo are wonderful leaders for sure. And, uh, exit has some pretty good tools for people. So I'm definitely an advocate. We chose exit for a reason. Yeah. And so what, what was sort of some of the defining things, uh, that brought you to exit and sort of solidified that as the brokerage that you wanted to go with? I mean, yeah, cause we could have chose any, um, really, I think, and this is probably a book question, but for me, why I supported Bo's decision so much for Exit was because Exit really is like a family. And we are, I don't like it when people are competing with each other as real estate agents. There's Against enough business. Yeah. yeah, there's enough business for all of us and we can all work together. And um, Exit really is like a family. So, and I would hear agents say little things like a call coming into the office and that it would on their listing and it would go to another agent that knew nothing about the listing. Just, just stupid stuff that shouldn't happen. Um, you know, that's, that was never, ever a thing with exit. So it was always like a family and the, they believed in training you and they have the technology, they have the tools and it's not about how many agents work for the office. It's about having that small number that's well-trained and ethical and can actually be successful. They want to make the individual person successful, not having uh, 1,500 people paying office dues. It's just not what exit is about. And so that was a big thing to us because we want it to be like. Well, that's important too, because you see some of these other brokerages in town where they've got a hundred or 150 agents. And when you look at what business those agents have done, you sort of see down at the bottom, there's a handful or maybe a dozen agents that haven't produced anything over the last 12 months, or maybe, you know, one or two here and there. Um, and that's, I, I think really a testament to the brokerage and the leadership there. And, and I know not every agent is in it full time. And, and for some people it's just, you know, maybe a hobby or something to do to make a little income or extra income. Um, but I feel like exit really put all of the agents in a position to succeed and feel supported and nurtured by not just their peers, but you know, their, their leadership. And I think that's really important because not, not everyone has access to their brokers like we do. Yeah. Yeah. Veda and Bo really do love to help people. I mean, they are the nicest people. I can't even tell you. I'm so impressed. I'm not as nice as them. I'm telling you, I'm not there <laughs> so much nicer than me uh, because I'm very like, you know, structured and like, oh, well, I'm back to back. I can't take a phone call right now. They will stop what they're doing and take a phone call to help someone. So yeah. I give them all the credit for that. Well, um, I know we're, we're getting close on time, so I'm going to let you go pretty quick, but I just want to know uh, you've, you've had a ton of success and I know that it's really due sh to sheer hard work, determination and perseverance, but, um, and, and you are an open book. You, you've helped me tremendously and I know you have a lot of other agents, but, um, what sort of like parting wisdom would you give to a newer agent or someone that hasn't been in the, in the industry very long? Um, if they're interested in, you know, achieving success, like on the level that you have. Oh gosh, that's hard. Um, what advice would I give a new agent to be successful? Um, I would definitely say, set goals and don't stop until you meet those goals. Um, I, I do put on a little training sometimes when Bo and Veda asked me to. And one thing that I tell agents to do is just to get a little piece of paper with what their goals are and put it in the dash of their car, whether it's paying off their house or buying a boat or That's such a good whatever. Idea. And then cross it off as you meet that goal. Like 
I think that you need to have goals because we put in a lot of hours. And so you got to keep those goals of why you're working so hard and being away from your family um, where you can see it, right? Like a vision. And I would just say, you got to grind it out. Like you got to put in the hours. It's not a magic pill. It's not like something that just happens. You have to make yourself learn this business and you've got to help people with not expecting anything in return and it will always come back full circle. So yeah. when you go to help someone buy or sell, you never can think about what you're going to get out of it. It's always got to be about, is this right for them? And all the rest comes naturally, you know, whether they decide not to do something, they'll refer someone to you. Like it, it should never be about us. So when I would tell an agent is never think of it it's never about you. It's always about them. It's always putting the client first and then put in the work and don't expect to get paid. And then eventually you will. You I will. promise. <laughs> It'll all work yes. out. At the end. And then, and then keep your goals there. Why am I doing this? Why am I working this hard? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if that, I, I have that to makes agree. Sense or not. I think that's one of the most important things is to have a goal and something that you're chasing and, and have a why you know, why am I trying to get there and why am I trying to do this? Yeah. And I, I think that makes all the difference in the world. So, well, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. I, I really I appreciate hope, it. I don't know if I did very you, good. But. You absolutely did. I, <laughs> it means so much. And we'll have to bring you back on too. Okay. Sounds right. good. Cool. Thanks. Kristen Martin. Thank you. Bye. Bye.